Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at the disadvantages of monetary policy. Although the monetary policy is very effective in managing aggregate demand in the economy, there are in some cases disadvantages to the policy which may not actually achieve this perfect state of domestic economic stability. I'm going to go through what these disadvantages are in this video. Okay, so firstly, the first disadvantage to monetary policy is the time lags associated with impact. So we know that one of the major advantages to monetary policy is that time lags to implementation are very, very short. However, time lags associated with impact from the implementation of monetary policy can in sometimes be very long and in some cases may cause monetary policy to be very uh, pro-cyclical. So let's look at this as a matter of uh, evidence or analysis gathered by uh, the ABS. So estimated um, estimates suggest that around a 1% a change in interest. So if the uh, monetary policy were to become contractionary, so they would decrease the interest rate from 3% to 2% or to increase from 3% to 4%, this would actually lead to around a 0.7% change to GDP. So it is not a perfect relationship between interest rates and GDP, and that's possibly because interest rates indirectly affects expenditure. So as we know, GDP is determined by aggregate demand, which is C plus I plus G plus net exports. But as we can see, interest rates do not fit into the components of either C, I, G, or NX, but it indirectly affects consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, net exports, and even government expenditure. So import interest rates, rather, are have an indirect effect on aggregate demand and therefore the impact is often less than the change in interest rate. But the second disadvantage to this or short shortfall to monetary policy is that oftentimes only 40% of this impact of impact of this total 0.0% change in GDP will be felt within a year within one year 80 percent two years and 100 percent three years and as we know the business cycle is only goes for around seven to ten years and so if 100 percent of this say contractionary monetary policy were to be felt three years after the actual implementation of the policy, then we can see quite possibly that this would actually become pro-cyclical and therefore destabilize the economy. So that's the first disadvantage of monetary policy is that there may be time lags associated with the impact of monetary policy into the economy. And so it's not a hundred percent impact within the first year of implementation. It's a hundred percent impact within the first three years of implementation. The second disadvantage is what is known as the bluntness of the policy. So unlike budgetary policy, monetary policy is not targeted. It cannot target specific industries and it affects the entire economy. So if monetary policy were to implement expansionary stance, that would suggest that they would actually decrease interest rates. And the decrease in interest rates should theoretically be felt throughout the entire economy. And so, especially in the case of our two-speed economy, this may cause problems with accelerated inflation if uh, expansionary monetary were to, pers um, were to persist. This may cause accelerated inflation in mining industries. So as we know, the mining boom ha has been very prevalent in the news recently. However, there is also a retail slump. 
so that the monetary policy stance were to become expansionary in order to encourage more spending in retail, this may also accelerate inflation or unsustainable growth in the mining sector. So the two-speed economy is a really um, pertinent example of why monetary policy may be a very blunt economic policy for the RBA to implement in order to conduct its uh, or to pursue domestic economic stability. So contrasting to budgetary policy where budgetary policy can actually target expenditure to certain sectors of the economy that actually need it most, monetary policy or the effects of monetary policy will be impacted or felt through the entire economy. Okay. So the third situation or the third disadvantage, the third and final disadvantage to monetary policy is that expansionary stance may not be as effective. So what this means is that when the RBA decides to decrease the cash rate in order to stimulate spending, the banks may not actually pass this decrease in, in interest rate or decrease in cash rate through as a decrease in market interest rates. And this is because the financial system is deregulated and that means the financial system here yeah, the financial system is independent of the RBA so when the RBA decreases interest rates although it gives the banks more scope to lower theirs, they don't have the obligations to actually lower their interest rates. And so when they try to overcome recession, the RBA by decreasing their interest rates or decrease, cutting the cash rate, it firstly only it firstly only acts as an indirect method of affecting aggregate demand as we saw here. And also secondly, the banks may not pass down changes in interest rates, which will make compromise the effectiveness of monetary policy in stimulating growth. So there are the three major disadvantages to monetary policy. Firstly, the time lags are associated with the impact of the policy after policy changes. Secondly, the bluntness of the policy in that it affects the entire economy. And thirdly, how expansionary monetary policy may not be as effective as contractionary monetary policy when expansionary stances are adopted to stimulate growth. And this is because the financial system is deregulated from the RBA or the central bank so that they have no obligation to pass on interest rates to consumers and businesses.